Hi guys, how's everyone? Good? Everybody spread out today. <laughs> That's okay. So, let's review last week's message. You guys remember who we talked about last week? No. Joseph. Joseph! Right. Why is this not working? Let me see. Go. Go. Oh, okay, one second. Okay, I forgot to put the USB in there. <laughs> That's why. Okay, now we're back on schedule. Okay, so last week we talked about Joseph, right? So Joseph, what happened to Joseph? Do you remember? He was sold into slavery. By who? His brothers. And then he ended up at the house of someone called Potiphar. Potiphar was the captain of the soldiers that guarded King Pharaoh. So he goes as a slave to this household. But while he's there, he's cleaning, washing dishes, cooking, sweeping, doing all this hard work. But he always does his best. And he always enjoys Emmanuel. So even though he was in a bad situation, he was always praying and enjoying Emmanuel. And as he was doing that, Potiphar saw. Potiphar saw, wow, this is amazing. Everything Joseph does turns out great. And Potiphar says, God is with Joseph. I can see the spirit of God is with Joseph. So what does Potiphar do? Potiphar makes him kind of ruler of his household. So he went from slave to ruler of the household. And while he's there, he learned many amazing things, right? So he learned administration, management, so how to kind of govern over people and manage the people. Also, he was ordering, taking care of the food and all the safety and all these concerns of the household. And he was in charge of the money as well. So he was a very busy person, but Potiphar trusted him that much. And he learned a great deal. So the amazing thing is Joseph went from a slave to the ruler of the household. So he rose to the summit. How did he do that? He enjoyed Emmanuel. Very good. Okay. And that continues on with Joseph's life. So today, today's message, Joseph, who was imprisoned. Okay, I'll read the verse. Follow after me. But while Joseph was there in prison, the Lord was with him. He showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. So the warden put Joseph in charge of all those held in prison. And he was made responsible for all that was done there. Amen. Okay, let's look at this together. So once again, Joseph, he went from a slave to ruler of the household. So right now, Joseph is working in the household of Potiphar. But here's something that you need to know. Potiphar has a wife. So this is Potiphar's wife. But something happens. Potiphar's wife has googly eyes. <laughs> she has hearts. Who does she have hearts for? Joseph. She's in love with Joseph. She thinks he's such a beautiful and handsome boy. 
She likes him so much, she wants to be with him. So what happens? One day when no one's looking, Potiphar's wife tried to get Joseph to come to her bed. But Joseph said, no, my master trusts me. I would never let him down. And in God's eyes, that would not be right. You're married. I can't do that. But it happens again. Again, when no one is at home, when Potiphar's left the house, she comes and she pesters him again about it. And this time, Joseph once again says, no, and he runs away. But as he runs away, he slips out of his coat and she grabs onto it. What happens? Potiphar's wife was so angry because Joseph kept refusing her. She wanted to get Joseph into trouble. So what does Potiphar's wife do? She calls all the other servants and she says, Joseph tried to get into my bed. And when I screamed, he ran off and left his coat behind. Is that what happened? No. She lied. She lied because she wanted Joseph to get punished because she, he wouldn't like her back. So what happens? When Potiphar comes home, his wife shows him Joseph's coat and told him the lie. Potiphar is very angry with Joseph and sends him to prison. He says, straight to prison with you because he's so angry. So here's what I want to ask you, remnants. Okay? Did Joseph do anything wrong? No. Did Joseph sin? No. Was this a punishment from God for something he did? No. He was innocent, so why did this happen? Because this can happen to us, right? I didn't do anything, but we get in trouble. Someone says we stole something, or we hit someone, or we said something bad, but we didn't do it. Is that fair? No. Was this fair for Joseph? No. He was innocent. So why did this happen? Joseph still trusted God and knew that God was with him. Even though this bad thing happened, he didn't think it was punishment from God. He didn't do anything wrong. He still trusted God. So why didn't he try to justify himself or clarify these false accusations? Because Joseph believed God allowed this for a reason. Why? He would realize this later. Later, later, he would realize this was the only way. This was God's plan of fulfilling the covenant dream that he had. So the point is, sometimes bad things happen to us, and it's not fair. Should we be angry at God? No. We should trust God because even when problems, bad things happen, God could have a plan. And Joseph, yes, he was sent to prison. Why? He didn't know. But within the problems, troubles, suffering we face, God's plan can be within this. Joseph knew this. He was beaten up. He was sold into slavery, but God's plan was for him to go as a slave so he could go to Potiphar's house and learn all of these things. That was God's plan. So when problems happen, pray to discover what is God's plan, okay? That's the first part. So now Joseph is in prison. So Joseph's in prison, but he knows God is with him. 
And God, he prays, help me to show your love to others. So he wants to help others. And so while he's there, he meets with a cupbearer, which is someone that works in the palace and brings the cup to the pharaoh for him to drink from. And also there is a baker. You guys know a baker, right? What does a baker do? He bakes. <laughs> right? A baker bakes. What does he bake? Bread and other things. Okay. So he meets these two in the prison. And what happens? He says, we both have had dreams, but there's no one that can interpret them. So Joseph says, do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me your dreams. So first the cupbearer shares his dream. He said, in my dream, I saw a vine in front of me, and on the vine were three branches. As soon as it budded, it blossomed, and its clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup, and put the cup in his hand. And so he asked Joseph, what does this mean? So Joseph prays to God, who allows him to interpret it, and he says, within three days, you will be set free and restored to your position as cupbearer. So that's good news, right? That's good. So Joseph asked him, when you're let go, please tell the Pharaoh about me. Remember me. It's very important. But then the baker, he hears that, so he shares his dream. I had a dream too. On my head were three baskets of bread. In the top basket were all kinds of baked goods for the Pharaoh, but the birds were eating them out of the basket on my head. What does this mean? So Joseph prays again, and he reveals what it means. Within three days, you will be put to death. So he will be killed. So it's not a good thing. But what happens? Just as Joseph said, these dreams were fulfilled. So the cupper is set free. The baker is put to death. But after that, Joseph, he continues to serve in the prison. He enjoys God being with him. And he helps the prison warden any way he could. And so just like with Potiphar, the warden soon saw that Joseph was honest, reliable, he was kind, he was unselfish, and how much he trusted God. So the warden saw God is with Joseph. So God's favor and blessing was upon him, and before long, the warden put him in charge of the entire prison. So just like before, he went from a slave in Potiphar's house to ruler. Now he was a prisoner, but now he rules over the prison. That's amazing, right? Whoops. So in prison, he was put in charge of everything, and he met these important officials. So now in prison, he's learning again. He learns about politics, and he learns about Many things tied to the palace and the pharaoh and how things work. So he learned some important things for the future. Okay? So whatever you do, remember, wherever you are, just like Joseph, God is with you. Okay? So once again, Joseph's on this covenant journey. And this time he starts as a low-class prisoner in the prison, but he's headed towards the summit because God is with me. So he does his best. He serves others and helps pri people in the prison. And one day he became the summit in charge of the entire prison. Right? So I want you remnants to remember this. 
If God is with you, he will help you to become the spiritual summit, okay? Okay, today's Bible verse, Genesis 39, 23. Okay, follow after me. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. Amen. Okay, let's pray. Dear God, thank you for today's message. Help me to always enjoy Emmanuel and pray to discover God's plan within problems. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Are you guys ready to sing? <laughs>